Hi, everybody. It's Yvonne DeVita with Dr. Larry McDaniel for another episode of Scratchins and Sniffins Out Loud. Before we get to our question today, I'd just like to remind everyone that Dr. Larry just got back from a big veterinary con uh, conference in Florida. He talked about it on the blog in a blog post, and he and I did a Scratchins and Sniffins Out Loud about it. So go to the blog so you can read and see all the pictures and learn about the new exciting things that are happening in veterinary medicine. Today, I'd like to welcome Dr. Larry. Hi, Dr. Larry. Good morning, Yvonne. Today, Dr. Larry, I am the questioner. I've been thinking about baths for our pets, our cats and dogs specifically. Our office manager here takes her little dog, Henrietta, to the groomer on a regular basis. And I know a number of people who do that with small dogs and big dogs. And I even know people who bathe their cats. Is this a necessary thing? Should I be bathing my dog and cat? Well, bathing is one thing, um, you know, and sometimes it's necessary. But I think the bigger, the larger question is really about grooming and what you can do, you know, with a brush in particular um, can help delay or, you know, forestall the need for bathing that much. You know, brushing brushing is really important for, especially for dogs. You know, cats do a pretty good job of, of um, grooming themselves. Right. We occasionally would brush Patty Paws, our old cat. But we brush Darcy probably three or four times a week. And one of the reasons is that, you know, she sheds. And if we don't brush her, we end up swiffering up that hair off the floor. And grooming is, a, or brushing is important too because it, you know, it can spread out the natural oils that are in a cat's or in a dog's skin and spread them out throughout their hair. It helps reduce odor, actually. Um, it gets rid of all the dead hair and some of the dead skin. It keeps them from getting mats, which can be a real pain in a long-haired dog. Yeah. So I think brushing is probably much more important um, than bathing in, in, in terms of grooming. Excellent. For cats. Um, yeah. Uh, my daughter has a long-haired cat, and mm -hmm. when she leaves her with me, her, the cat with me, she has three. She leaves them all, but she'll say, "Mom, don't forget to brush Bella, because if uh -huh. I don't, she'll end up with mats rather quickly." Right. So I, I hear what you're saying about that. Carmel has such a thick coat of fur. We could brush her every day, and she would still be uh, dropping little pieces of of hairballs around, which is what she does. I'm not complaining. So in the summer, is uh, is it a, I mean, I'm thinking I wouldn't do this in the winter if I were doing it myself, other than grooming, as you're saying. I can understand that. But in the summer, is it a good thing maybe once in the summer to take them in the backyard and bathe them? A big dog, a little dog, whatever? Well, it doesn't hurt them to bathe them. I mean, there's a few precautions that you need to take. You know, we, we get, Darcy goes to a groomer every every couple of months or so and gets a bath. Um, but there's just a few precautions. You know, if you're brushing them regularly, uh, that's important. And before you would give them a bath, you would want to brush them because you wouldn't want, you know, bathing a dog that has a mat can make that mat even worse. Oh. So it's a good idea to brush them before you bathe them. Uh, you don't want to bathe them too often because it can dry out their skin. And you especially don't want to use um, human products on them because those, the soaps and detergents and stuff in human products can really dry out their skin. And it's best to use a, you know, a specific um, dog or cat shampoo. Yeah, and you just want to make sure, you know, take some precautions like make sure you've got everything you need when you're mm -hmm. going to bathe the dog. You know, we, we do Darcy... Uh, inside in the winter in a bathtub so she can't escape. And then we do her outside um, uh, with a hose in the summer when it's real warm. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it can be a traumatic experience for a dog because all of a sudden you're, <laughs> all of a sudden you're, uh, you know, you're, you're putting all this water on them and they don't know what's going on. So you just need to make sure you've got all the stuff that you need. You want to make sure you've got the escape routes blocked. You know, the last thing you want is your dog bolting into the living room with a bunch of water and suds and shaking off on your furniture. Um, 
You want to have a towel ready. And, you know, it's also a good idea to maybe take a little piece of cotton or something and put it, put the cotton in their ears so you don't get soap or stuff down in their ears. That can really aggravate them. And to, around the eyes. I, I remember when I yeah. worked at the veterinary office, we used to put, um, it wasn't Vaseline, but it was something around the eyes to keep the water and soap out. Right. We we always used to put just a little ophthalmic ointment in their eyes. And what I do is I just don't wash their heads. You know, if I'm doing that at home and I don't mm-hmm. have anything to protect their eyes, I just, you know, just kind right. of stay away from their head and concentrate mm-hmm. on the rest of them. But, um, yeah, you don't want to get soap in their eyes. You don't want to get soap in their ears. Um, and you want to make sure that you rinse them really thoroughly. You know, it's, you get them all lathered up and then make sure you rinse all of the soap, uh, you know, down to the skin. And it's kind of, you know, it's a chore with a big dog that's got a big undercoat like Carmel or Darcy. Yeah. And also, in the summer, when we talk now, we're talking about grooming. It's the middle of winter here. But in the summer, for long-haired dogs, do you recommend trimming their fur, not shaving them? I think shaving them is not a good idea, is it? I don't think so. I don't think it's. I think it's unnecessary. Here in New Mexico, you know, a dog with a long-haired coat—they're almost like a Bedouin. You know, I mean, the the coat actually insulates them from the heat. Ah. So, I'm I'm not a big fan of shaving uh, long-haired dogs in hot climates. You know, because um, you know, the coat can serve as their own little air conditioner in in some cases, and just kind of protect them from the heat. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's all for today, everyone. I think um, that covers the information I needed on grooming and bathing. And, Dr. Larry, thank you. Next week, we are going to have another call-in session. So I hope everyone will come back for that. I will mention it ahead of time on the blog. Dr. Larry, have a great day. Okay, Yvonne. Talk to you later.